Phone, phone. Roger, roger. Hello, it's JCSA Physics Explained. This video is about the life cycle of stars. This video will cover what is the life cycle of small stars? What is the life cycle of big stars and massive stars? What are the forces that act on a star during its main sequence? All stars, regardless of their size, start off as a nebula, an interstellar cloud of gases like hydrogen, helium, and particles of dust. Nebula, a cloud of dust and gas. Next, all stars, regardless of their size, turn into a protostar. Gravity is condensing the scattered matter while heat and density are increasing to numbers beyond any imagination. A protostar is born. Gravity pulls the dust and gas together, which heats up, forming a protostar. Next, all stars, regardless of their size, turn into a main sequence star. The star is now powered by the fusion of hydrogen into helium at its core. The forces of this process are pushing outwards, but are counterbalanced by gravity. Main sequence star. The force of gravity pulling inward is balanced by the force of nuclear pressure pushing outward, caused by the nuclear fusion of hydrogen into helium. Main sequence star. Small and medium stars go on to become red giants. The star expands and gets colder until it becomes a red giant. When small and medium sized stars start to run out of hydrogen, they cool and expand to become a red giant. After the red giant phase, small and medium sized stars then eject their outer layer of gas and dust, which just leaves a hot core called a white dwarf. A hot core called a white dwarf. After the white dwarf phase, small and medium sized stars then cool to become black dwarfs. To become a black dwarf, from the main sequence star it is now, the sun would expand into a red giant, fade out to a white dwarf state, and only then cool down to become a black dwarf. The white dwarf cools and becomes a black dwarf. Big stars and massive stars, after their main sequence star phase, they swell up so much they become red supergiants. The star expands and gets colder until it becomes a red supergiant. When big stars and massive stars start to run out of hydrogen, they cool, then expand so much they become red supergiants. Big stars and massive stars, after the red supergiant phase, they explode in a supernova. The fusion cannot be maintained anymore, making the core instable. It implodes, collapses, and the star bursts into a Type II supernova of astonishing beauty, freeing all the elements created in its lifespan. Big stars and massive stars, after the red supergiant phase, they explode as a supernova big stars. After the outer layers have exploded off into space during the supernova, a very dense core is left called a neutron star. Big stars. After the outer layers have exploded off into space during the supernova, a very dense core is left called a neutron star. Massive stars. After the outer layers have exploded off into space during the supernova, gravity collapses the core, creating a black hole. The gravitational pull of black holes are so strong 
that not even light can escape. What is left of the star is a stellar black hole, an object of enormous density, creating a gravitational field that even photons cannot escape. Massive stars, after the outer layers have exploded off into space during the supernova, gravity collapses the core, creating a black hole. The gravitational pull of black holes are so strong that not even light can escape. Want to see more videos like this? Subscribe to my channel, GCSE Physics Explained. Thanks very much and bye for now.